Okay. Oh, to hear you. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, all right. So thank you so much for the invitation uh, to give this this talk. Um, so today, what I want to discuss about uh, this new initiative uh, that is to design and eventually uh, form the uh, Inter-American Network of Networks on uh, QCD Challenges. Uh, this is a program that's been funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, and, and this is in the context of uh, these new uh, efforts to engage the international communities, as we have seen with the success of um, the you know, recent developments of vaccines and so on. But just in the last last year, in, in December 2020, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences um, issued a report where they have um, addressed uh, like the importance of international collaboration along uh, six different axes that you see here, the, the importance for um, for addressing scientific questions, the competition for global talent and economic national security, and also developing uh, ethic norms and funding realities for big projects in science. And, um, and along those axes, um, it has also been recognized the need for inter-American scientific cooperation. And in this framework, um, the uh, we are participating also with the Ax AxelNet program, which is uh, an NSF program for that stands for Accelerating Research Through International Network-to-Network -network, uh, Collaborations. So it's something that uh, can be done beyond just one uh, individual networks for addressing or accelerating uh, these scientific discoveries. And in particular, we have um, we have proposed the the Inter-American Network of Networks of QCD Challenging, and in particular for designing this network, because uh, that's the, the main objective, across the United States, Canada, and Latin American countries uh, to accelerate the process of QCD uh, discoveries. And this network has a big component, also the um, education and the training of uh, students and early career scientists particularly um, in how this uh, network of networks can train them for multi-team uh, international experience. And uh, also for us, it's, it's very important to see how this initiative could help for integrating the, the, the scientific community, in particular nuclear physics uh, or, or high energy physics interested on QCD problems, and how this help us identifying uh, scientific uh, norms and ethics for, for the future, in particular, US-led uh, network to network projects. And in this uh, program, um, uh, it's not just me in the coordination. We also have Christine Aydala from Michigan University, uh, Carlos Bertulani from Texas a and Commerce, uh, Yen De La Yen from Old Dominion, and Ave uh, Des Deshpandi from Stony Brook. And together with them, uh, we have uh, proposed this, um, uh, this, this initiative. And NSF AxelNet has two different phases. One is the design, design phase, where we are now, and uh, that we got supported for $250,000 for two years, uh, and uh, for do the design of this um, program. And eventually we are aimed for the full implementation where we expect to get, uh, we will propose to get $2 million uh, for, the, for the actual implementation of this program. Uh, it, it, that said, at this stage and in the future, we also expect to leverage additional resources from different contributors. Now, the main goals of this program is actually to develop this partnership in nuclear physics, identify the needs and the strengths and synergies for such a project, and uh, design activities with uh, all these um, regional for complementary resources and, and enhance the training for the for the early, for the next generation of, of physicists. Now, in terms of research area, it's actually in nuclear sciences really broad. So we covered theory, accelerated technologies, uh, experimental, you know, um, computing. So it's a very broad uh, uh, areas of research. And in terms of the scientific questions, so we are basically driven by the uh, by the questions of the US long range plan that are supported by NSF and DOE, where 
all the scientific questions are listed and of course all focus on very fundamental uh, questions about the, the nature of uh, QCD uh, matter. Now, uh, we have identified you know, projects where there is a strong US-led contribution um, in uh, a Jefferson Lab, a BNL, uh, also at CERN, and in the future electron ion collider. Um, of course, uh, these are like the, the, the largest projects with a stronger international component. And in particular for the electron ion collider, um, there is this new uh, project that has been endorsed by the Department of Energy uh, for um, also you know, targeting uh, QCD phys physics. Uh, one of the things that we have also identified is that the, at the moment, the Latin American contribution uh, is, is, and also the one from Canada, is um, currently quite relatively small um, uh, compared to the um, potential. And so one of the drivers also is to um, that this program could also help um, uh, integrating more participation in such uh, US-led projects. Now, uh, in particular for the plan activities, so we, we, we have the plan to develop exchange and mobility programs between US, Canada, and Latin American networks. So at the moment, most of the funding that we have are actually going to be given for uh, mobility programs uh, across the region. And also we had some funding for dedicated uh, workshops if the network of networks, you know, um, for coordination and, and eventually also have a scientific retreat where we can uh, bring the different par partners to, to foster this communication across the, across the networks. Um, as I said, this is the, the main uh, driver at the design phase is to establish communication. So, of an established relationship between the network representative. And we also recognize there is the need for, you know, perhaps new networks in, uh, in, and those networks will also be uh, welcome and participating in the, in the different activities, the mobility programs um, that we have. And the, the plan that we have is that such business will be about one month long in, in a pilot program where we will be targeting particularly graduate students, postdoc, and, and, and early career uh, researchers. I mean, um, Daniel. Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah, thank you. yeah uh, uh, in terms of the uh, list uh, that we have invited networks, the networks that we have been identified that I, I listed here, uh, one thing that uh, from the research that we have done and from the discussion with the um, NSF um, expectations, as a matter of fact, the uh, sort of net, Brazil is the one that has like two networks where they are actually um, consistent with the guidelines at the moment. But also we have other associations that like Al Alafna and also the Mexican Community for Accelerators that uh, if from the Latin America perspective that are uh, part of the networks. But as I said, this is an open network. So future networks that may be formed uh, are, will also be welcome to participate. Now, uh, in the next step, so we have, I, I want to advertise that we have a kickoff meeting um, in the uh, scheduled for December 16. The next page, I have the, I have the, the link to the, to the Indico page. So we are just really starting. And in this kickoff meeting, we will bring all the people together and we have extended discussion. Uh, at, by the end of the year, we expect to have the first pilot program uh, for the exchange, exchange visits. And, um, we also want to comment that uh, also research centers, although they are not networks, they are being invited as network partners as a way to also leverage uh, existing resources. Um, and we have, uh, we have the plan to have a, a list of national contact people when, it's, when we think it's appropriate to help us, you know, perhaps um, be developing those networks uh, that are all driven by the community, uh, of course, by those communities and, and not, not by us. Um, and we're in the process of forming the advisory board by some senior colleagues um, that they, they will also help us on, on designing this program. So here, uh, with this, I finish. So we have here the, the list to the program is a, is a temporary, um, you know, in preparation website that we just have here where you can see more details and more news about this uh, program. 
And as I said, you're all invited. It's an open open meeting. Uh, it will be um, hybrid. So, uh, but we are actually expecting most of the people, the great majority, to be virtual on December 16. Organize uh, the um, uh, the Center for uh, Nuclear Frontiers in Stony Brook. And if you click there, so you are all welcome to join uh, to register. Uh, so thank you very much for for the opportunity to talk about this. All right, thank you very much to you, Daniel. Uh, yes, um, we can just proceed with the question and comments. I think that uh, it's very important also to take up for tomorrow discussion on last free association as well. So, Rogerio, go ahead. Yeah, so thank you, Daniel. Uh, so I was mentioned, mentioning to you, we're in the process of uh, establishing a Latin American Association for High Energy uh, Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, we will probably we will be very happy to uh, uh, get in touch with you guys uh, to see how we can uh, collaborate. So this is a very nice initiative. So we have we are mostly the high energy end of QCD, uh, but we have uh, people working uh, different uh, LHC experiments and, and even in, in, in theories. So uh, I think we can uh, we can collaborate uh, in this program. Uh, be a part of this uh, network of networks. So thank you for for your for your talk. No, that will be that will be great, Richard. So we're we're looking forward yes to to discuss with you about this. Yeah, and you will be invited, of course, to the de December sixteenth. To... Okay. Yeah, that's a good plan. All right. So if there are more questions, so please go ahead. We have still on time regarding questions for this talk. your hand, type on the chat if you want. All. Questions, comments? Further information, Daniel, do you want? You are still uh, time. Well, <laughs> that, well, it's good perhaps that, you know, we have this web, this, uh, this link. So the, yes. Well, the, the, just, just to say that uh, you're all really, um, to emphasize again, that we are just, uh, we haven't really advertised it. So this is the first time that we are advertising the, the meeting. And uh, just this morning, we have a first um, structure for the December 16. And uh, so we will also use all the different mailing lists that we have. So you will get uh, information about the exchange program. Uh, so that you you invite you know people uh, to to apply and uh, we have um, we have funding for as I said uh, uh, students or postdoc or early career uh, researchers that they from Latin America that they want to they want to go to um, for example to any institution in in the United States so of course is is not just from the people that are in the in the in the coordination but it's from all the institutions. Um, and and also national labs, if they want to uh, participate in programs. So more, the, there are some preliminary information on the program website about the requirements uh, and the um, the expectations. But more information will be given in the first call. Really sounds very nice. Okay, so last opportunity to ask for questions to Daniel. Okay, if not, so thank you very much again, Daniel. And thank then you so much. Yeah. We move to the next uh, talk. All right, so let me see. All right, good. So, next talk is uh, from Ivan Sibdelnik from Balseiro in Argentina, talking about Lago, the Latin American Giant Observatory, the current status, projects, and uh, future perspective. Sounds very nice. So. Please, Ivan, try to open your mic, get in contact, and let's see if everything is okay. well. Can you hear me? Yes, you can see my slides. Yeah, Hello, everybody. My name is Ivan Sidelnik, and uh, as the PI of uh, LAGO, the Latin American Giant Observatory, I want to present 
the, the latest news and, and science we are doing here and the developments. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the SILAFI organizers to let me present this. Uh, I don't know since when Lago is not present at SILAFI, but we will try to change this in, in this one and, uh, and next editions of SILAFI. I think we, we need to, to have a strong presence here. So uh, if you don't know Lago, Lago is a giant, but not centralized uh, collaborative network of uh, upper particle detectors. So we, we are running at a global scale and operating in 11 countries of Latin America. So we have also Spain as a, as associated partner uh, included in the network. Um, the main objectives of LAGO, of LAGO are uh, to study high energy gamma sources and to study also space weather and, and climate phenomena. So we do some astrophysics and high energy physics uh, studies. And we consider us as a, as a seeder at Latin America. So, you know, we, we, we share the idea of the network is to share uh, hardware and expertise and also the data from, from all the detectors along the the all the countries involved and this is a, a picture where the location of some of their planet and, and currently running and also deploying uh, being deploying detectors are so as i mentioned uh, lago has scientific goals but also academic goals so we we the intention of lago is to train latin american students in high energy and astroparticle physics and, and to, to build a Latin American network, we, we also have this, uh, this network and, uh, and also the, the scientific goals are very important, as I said, to, to do some astroparticle physics, study space weather and high energy physics through gamma ray burst and measure some backer radiation at different ground levels. Uh, just in case we are running from Mexico to, to Antarctica. So it's a very, very long network. So our, our basic tool, this uh, water cherry con detector, is a very simple detector, but has its, its issues. So we use just one PMT in a water tank and we are developing and, and constantly improving our electronic system. Uh, so if you want more details, you can go to the, to the publications. Uh, these are sort of the basics I'm going to try to, to go fast on, on all the slides. So the idea is that we can perform a multispectral analysis. So we, we measure uh, simultaneously the secondaries at ground level that are produced by cosmic rays. And we have developed, developed also uh, an intensive simulation and data analysis frameworks. So we have that running. I want to show you now after this slide. And so the idea is that we can connect the cosmic ray flux that uh, we have uh, outside our, uh, our planet through all this chain through the sea to the signals into the detector to study that. So there is a, a very strong synergy in what we can do with our simple but very powerful detectors. And through this, the analysis of the, of the charge spectrum, we can do a lot of things, this multispectral analysis, uh, dividing the, the, this charge spectrum into different parts. So I'm going to, to go quickly on this. So as I said, we developed RT, that it's a simulation framework that connects all these steps from the flux of cosmic rays to primary and those the secondaries uh, in the Earth atmosphere and with the uh, connecting different, different as you see, uh, simulation programs uh, until the signals uh, into the detector using GM4. Corsica and magnetocosmics. So this all the chain 
Again, you can see the, for, for more details, you can see the publications. I think this, this uh, presentation is also uploaded in the web page. So what we have is, is this. This is an example of our simulation framework, the output, the final output. Uh, no, this is not the final output. This is just the, the step of the secondaries at ground level. After this, we, we pass this through the detector. But uh, this is very interesting because we can see, for instance, the difference between uh, one of our sites that is uh, 28 meters above sea level at uh, La Serena in Chile. So this is a particle distribution and, and you can see all the components. And this is a very interesting comparison between having then the Chimborazo Mount and Imata that is a site uh, in Peru. Both uh, this, this site is, uh, all, is running and these two are projected for the near future, I hope. Um, and this is very important because very high altitude site allow us to, to study uh, high energy gamma ray burst. So uh, going through a lot of uh, branches of what LAGO is as a network, we, we develop it what we call LAGO universities. That is that we have a strong uh, program in performing schools of high energy physics. So we, we have been working in this combined mode since 2012, combined mode meaning presential uh, in-person meetings and virtual meetings. So we, we have a lot of uh, students uh, through these years and this is a picture of uh, one, uh, the last in-person meeting in 2019 at uh, Buenos Aires. And we are having, I hope, if everything goes well, our next meeting at Tucumán, also in Argentina, uh, the next edition uh, in-person and also virtual of, of our workshop that we have a lot of topics, uh, very interesting. To, to, to show us a school uh, and this again as a cedar. Now, this is an example of a new and decaying study in one of our detectors that we show in, in the school. So some of the statistics of LAGO, I'm going also we try to, to go quickly on this. We have a lot of, uh, as you can see this number, uh, I would really like to, to increase the, the PhD thesis that we run, but uh, we have a lot of thesis dedicated only to, to LAGO subjects. So we've been running since a lot of time, and, and I think it's, it's, uh, we have very, very important impact. As uh, a friend of mine says, the scientific production of our investments tends to infinity because uh, we almost are running of little fundings with no money, <laughs> we hope that this, this can change in the future. So- uh, Four minutes left, I'm sorry, Ivan. How much? Four, four minutes left. Ah, okay. So uh, this is uh, another of our programs, Lago Virtual, that is to manage the data, the, the, the measured by the detectors, but uh, also the simulated data. So we have a central repository and it's mirrored to, to other sites. So every site has its own data, but also uh, it can have the, the shared data from the other sites. Uh, we have inside our space weather program, uh, these uh, two dedicated sites in Antarctica, as I said, uh, uh, it's very hard to work in there, but it's also very nice. So as you can see, this, this program allow us, for example, to, to study four bush decreases. Uh, we have uh, many presentations in the last ICRC. This is one example of this, where this uh, tanka detector that is in Brazil as a part of LAGO. Uh, so it's almost mapping the McMurdo that is a neutron monitor uh, with the same rigidity cutoff. So we think that we can operate in this mode. Um, 
this, uh, this is uh, another study from Antarctica data uh, combining the data from Marambio base, that is the Argentina and Antarctic base, with a, another neutron monitor that is more or less the same rigidity cutoff. So as you can see, the, the, this is the background radiation. So the count rate uh, goes similar. And we are having another studies uh, through seismic uh, effects that could affect the atmosphere, uh, electric or magnetic uh, fields. So we are studying this. This is all, again, uh, different branches that we are studying. And we just started these years with many of these. Uh, so this is very interesting that the study that they are performing uh, some groups. Again, uh, we are going with our high energy program. These are the projects that we are trying to carry on to study the gamma ray burst. This is a map of, uh, we have presented this at the ICRC. This is a map of the known uh, events gamma ray burst in 2020. And this, this in colors presents the field of view of the dif of different detectors and so all of these are projects, but we are trying to install for next year. So we think we can have a very nice coverage in the sky. Uh, even more if we add more, uh, we just added four of the sites. Uh, if we have more of the sites, we have more coverage, but we, we try to be a little bit conservative about this. Um, I think this is my almost last last slide uh, we are also running a machine learning program to analyze data so as you saw the one of the, sim the simulations that i show that they are very well identified the different particle types so we want to do that in the detector it's a very difficult task to separate these these components so we are trying we are having a machine learning program to 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 attack this, that uh, problem as a first thing. And also we are analyzing the Michel spectrum that is just the, the electromagnetic part of the charge spectrum. Uh, that uh, it, it's very interesting because it, because it can give us a, another calibration point for the detector. So there are some subtleties there. Uh, and I want to finish with this. So, uh, in global, to conclude, we are Lagos uh, Latin American network, and we train students, and we are doing a lot of physics in in very branches, many different branches. Sorry, uh, focusing on high energy gamma ray bursts, astroparticle physics, and background radiation, and uh, space weather. So I think that's it. Yes. Thank you very much. It was Thank you very much quick. to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are on time. So, it runs. <laughs> more exciting uh, time is, is coming about questions and comments. Um, I have two questions, one question and one comment, but I'm going to let it for the for, uh, to the end. So please, um, the audience, if you want to ask something to Ivan, raise your hand or type. Yes, Rogerio, go ahead. Ivan, thanks for the talk. Uh, it's really impressive. So my question is about the role of Red Clara and if your data is uh, open to the public. Uh, our, our data is not uh, open to the public as it is. So we had different levels of, uh, of data. So I, I went a little bit uh, faster on this, of course, but uh, so there is a plan to release some of the high quality data after a certain uh, as, uh, internal embargo time, as I said. So, so after a while, we are going to, to release some of the data, uh, but it's a very hard task to say, distribute this, this amount of data through all the sites. So that's uh, Red Clara is uh, involved with us uh, 
trying to ease this, this task that is very, is very complicated. Uh, we have, as I said, uh, some central repository that is at Colombia, and, and then we distribute in, in, in a couple of other sites. So there is no plan to, to release the data because it's, it's, we need to, to set up the, the, the different levels of, of quality after, after do that. Thank you, Ivan. So we, yes, sorry. Thank you. Okay, are there more questions? Comments? More questions? Okay, meanwhile, let me ask you to, uh, to you, Ivan, some, uh, some concern about, uh, as far as I understood, uh, Lago is not a centralized experiment. So it means that there are several locations. So I suppose that there would be uh, several integration sites. Uh, uh, can you comment a little bit more about this uh, capacity building each site, each university or institution has regarding to the, to the joint propo uh, purpose to, to, to grow in the network of telescopes? Okay, uh, it's a it's a, a very nice question because it's I think it's one of the the core of Lago. So you have many different sites and with with different capacity buildings. So some of them can have their own grants and and their own money from the institutions, and some others cannot. So we try to share not just the data, but also some of the hardware that sometimes is very expensive uh, and it's, it's, very, it's very hard to find. So I, I, I try to, to go for a, for a unified grant, and, uh, but it's, it's very hard for this, this kind of network because it's very distributed. So every institution has its own money, as we said. So they have partially some of their own resources and, and Lago as a network try to help each site to build a detector and to keep it running. So we, we have no, no money from any other place. So it's very hard to run in these conditions through the years. So to say mostly in these uh, two pandemic years was very hard because most of the detectors were broken and we were not allowed to enter into the institutions. So there was no possibility to fix them. And that made a lot, a lot of delay in, the, in our programs. So we were not able to take data with most of the detectors because of this. And, and there is, was no way to help anybody to do anything. So the, for instance, the, the, the idea of the workshop is to, to run as, a, as an exchange of, of hardware, of, of knowledge, and a lot of things. So we cannot do that, just the virtual part, not in, in presence, not in person. So these two years have been very rough for us. Uh, but we try to, to keep it going and, and make a lot of things uh, as we can in the virtual world. All right. Uh, I'm a follower, to be honest, of the Lagos experiment. And I really admire uh, the vision you have to refurbishment and other kind of issue that makes it uh, very interesting for looking for funding. Okay. So it is not all about that should be new. We need to really refurbish some uh, equipment, some stuff. So I really admire uh, what you do because I have been in close uh, communication with the Ecuador team when I was working there. So uh, I really, uh, I'm really very interested to, to the progress of the experiment. That's my personal opinion. So uh, it's what I wanted to comment. So congratulate to you and the collaboration because it's a very good initiative and and we expect a lot of 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 this. Okay, but one last question. Maybe have some seconds more. 
uh, regarding to the physics um, to the physics plants uh, I don't know because I haven't uh, uh, gone through the uh, to the scientific publication the reports and so on but I would like to to know if you could give uh, me or give us in general an idea about the current studies on effective areas of its site is there any and if there is any what is the plan to uh, merge that knowledge in order to get an idea of what could be expecting from gamma ray? Uh, so you are talking about gamma ray because it was a little bit uh, cut. I think effective area for gamma ray bots in each side of the. Uh, what, what is the plan you have for merging this such, one? Uh, uh, progress on that merging data so you say the, the information from the areas for each side and the joint uh, operation of the observatory so we we lost a, a lot of the detectors that are at very high altitude so we are trying to rebuild that so thank you for your comment as you said uh, it's very hard for us to have a, to find funding for all the the observatory so we we try each site at the time and then we try to 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 merge as you said but in, in another concept to merge the 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 projects and try to build the network in these different capacities so we have an idea to to start with this four uh, high altitude site we we have a Chakaltasha that it's not running, but the plan is the next month. So the, the next month, they are about to to put the the detector there. So the idea is to have a, a, a say a connected network, the most online that we can, and and if there is an event, a gamma ray burst event, try to warn each other and 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 measure at the same time so and go in advance with that and this is a, a very long shot but uh, try to have a network that that can measure and, and warn about this this type of events as also as space weather events as we have a sort of coronal mass ejections uh, or the four bush decreases so our long shot idea is to to, to measure that uh, the most uh, real time that we can. So to do a trained analysis with all the detector at the same time, most quickly, but I don't know if that is going to be possible because of the the very hard way the, the connection, the, 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 the internet connection works. Uh, so it's very hard to, to find an infrastructure that, that works in all the sites at the same time. So there's some sites that the things work, some other sites that things don't work so well. So we have the Antarctic site, for instance, that is uh, very hard to, to, to have a connection and, and to have an, an online data all the time. Also, I, I know we will try to do that Chimborazo at Monte Chimborazo. We have a, a, a project that was approved uh, just this month. Uh, we are trying to, we are going to, to build this detector, but it's isolated at very high altitude. I don't know how the connection is going to work to, to make sure that we can function as a network that gives information in real time. So that's, I'm being totally honest with this. That's our idea. That's what we are going to, to, to try to do, but I don't know. <laughs> no, you do that. I think well, you going to work. do the job very well. So once again, I, I, I admire what you do. Okay, hold the collaboration, Emmy. <laughs> thank you great, very much. Great, I love it, yeah. Uh, thank you, Ivan. And if there is no more questions, so maybe it's the time for moving to the second part of the afternoon session. And if you, Rogerio or Edgar, want to say something.